Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, apparently now conservative women think that the, the red pill is anti-conservative women and, uh, and we're right wingers and we're now attacking conser good conservative women. Oh, you evil men. <laughs> I'm not conservative. I'm not liberal. I'm undefined. I'm a narco capitalist. I'm libertarian. I'm leave me the F alone. Small government, big, big, big freedom. That that's where I am. So I got into this tiff, um, this, uh, Abby Libby, and she's a nice gal. I have nothing against her. Uh, she says, uh, her, you know, her, her, uh, she identifies as your and mom. I think that's fair. Uh, but she's married to John, host of Conspiracy Pilled, and uh, inquiries, and then she gives her information. She's got about 32,000 followers. Um, she's a conservative woman. That's great. That's awesome. But she came out with this post the other day because, let's face it, when, when um, you know, when Matt Walsh and Ben Shapiro and all those guys come out and they go, oh, you red pillars, you're as bad as the feminists, and you're not getting married, you're ruining society, and just man up and all this other stuff, I snap back at that. And I find that I'm, I'm pushing back more and more and more because nobody understands us. Nobody understands us at all. When we push against feminism and all that stuff, they're like, oh, you right wingers. And then we're like, hey, conservative women and trad cons are no better. Oh, you left wing. I don't know what you are, but it's your fault. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we're going to go over this today. Have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, so she says, uh, conservative women have been fighting feminism, fighting baby deletion, and fighting for traditional values for years and making real progress, only to have right-wing men turn on us in 2023, bitterly blaming all women for what's wrong in society. It's uh, uh, such an incredible betrayal. I responded to her with her with, and yet you, and I didn't even go down a bunch of alleys we could go down. I just kept it very simple. I said, and yet you same women never complained when advertising, movies, commercials, the media, news, television, and one half of the country point paints us as evil, misogynistic, snuggle strugglers, <laughs> right? And I just said, we've had it. And she said, we did actually, we did fight all of it. And, and then this other gal down below her, and again, I'm, I'm, look, here's the thing. Don't, don't send anything mean to these women. Like this is not an attack video. Um, this is a place where we can discuss this stuff because maybe if they see this video or someone shares it with them or we can have a discussion about this, maybe we can help clear their mind about it. Maybe that we can help them understand us. And then instead of, oh, we're fighting for the patriarch, they, they understand where we're coming from. So this guy, gal below, the missus, uh, she's Christian, married, mother, unapologetically pro-life, humanitarian, a thought criminal, obnoxiously lovable, Twitter's version of the Hunger Games. She's got about 8,000 followers. Uh, I'm picking these two specifically because I've been in these threads and having a communication. Uh, she says, and this is exactly why the majority of my tweets are aimed at men. It's not that my views have changed. I don't hate men. I don't like what feminism does. I've spent years defending men against the vitriol being spewed at them by women only to feel betrayed. These same men are calling me ungodly names. Those are probably not conservative men. I would probably guarantee you that. Telling me women are essentially second-class citizens. There's so many other things that I can mention, but I won't. It's a betrayal. Men are not saying women are second-class citizens. Well, now, some guys aren't there. Some guys are very much in their angry red pill phase. Most guys are saying, look, a lot of these problems started when the no-fault divorce and women going into the workforce and uh, women not being moms anymore and the schools are now educating kids instead of uh, families at home and there's no male teachers and there's no male, strong male role models anymore. And, and so now they, these women are basically like calling us names. Uh, Sour Patch Lids here, for, and she used to be on Tim Pool. She's got almost 200,000 uh, followers. Uh, she says, this is exactly what happened to me and why I stopped defending men. Why would I defend men who hate me for my chromosomes when I've done nothing but sick up for their causes? I see the problems clearly. I'm happy to call out feminism, but I won't be attacked from both sides for nothing. And see, this is, the, what's pro, what happens is, again, there's a small, loud, angry group of quote-unquote red pill men. This is why I'm not going to call myself red pill anymore. Uh, you know, they, they see the, 
they see the Andrew Tates, they see the pearl from pearly things, and well, that's that's the red pill. That's why I'm not going to call myself red pill anymore. It's been hijacked. And this is not what we're saying. We're not saying they're second-class citizens. But what we are saying is, you know something? If you look at the voting trends of women, they vote emotion over logic. If you look at people in the government, the females in, in the government, women in the government, emotion over logic. But when we start talking about things that look like evidence, they want to act like they're blind. They don't know what this is. These are our national secrets. Looks like in the shitter to me. Until they find some evidence, we need to get back to the people's work, which means keeping this government open so that people don't go hungry in the streets of the United States. And I will Oh, I want to do these nice things for all these, all these groups of people. And I want to heal the world and love the world with this. We don't have the money for that. Well, we're going to do it anyway. We're going to go bankrupt. Well, that's what the voters want. And, and so both men and women in the government follow right along. And then we're going to be all bankrupt and everything else. Well, first, uh, so I had an argument. This is my reply to her. Uh, I said, watch what women do, not what they say. Now, remember, these two particular women are perfectly fine. I'm not calling them out. So many times when you say women on the right, women on the left, everybody goes, not me. I know this one girl or I'm not. this per Okay, we're not talking about you. We're talking about statistically. But again, what do they do? They attack with emotion. They feel personally attacked. That's not what we're doing. We're talking about statistics. So once again, I bring statistics to bear to show that these right-wing Christian loving good mothers, they're, they're doing the same thing everybody else is. Maybe not these two particular ones that I'm talking about, but in general. So I say, watch what women do, not what they say. Christian and right-wing women always speak from their high horse about how they fight for men in traditional value, fairness, and uh, equality under the laws. Let's look at some divorce statistics. Now, why do I want to talk about divorce and the, them doing the good fight. Because the good fight that we're talking about is, did you show up to your marriage with a low body count? Did you get married? Did you have a family? Are you still married? Are, are you not dragging men through the courts? Are you not watching content that makes fun of men? Are you not going and seeing mo modern Hollywood movies? Are you not buying the products that insult men as stupid idiots? I guess my answer would probably be no. I don't think if they saw a commercial showing a vacuum cleaner and the guy's like a monkey trying to put it together and he's all confused, I don't think that woman's likely to say, you know, what? I'm going to boycott that product. I do. I do that. We do that as men. I doubt women will go so far. And here's the funny thing. My mom didn't even notice this stuff. Like I, I went over to visit her and we were watching TV and I said, did you notice that? And she said, no, what? And I said that the guy was basically a mouth breathing rock and the, and the smart you know, funny wife had to show him how to properly do something without breaking something. And she said, no. I said, watch the commercials. Watch the commercials. And she was watching a news program. We were just having a conversation. Next time commercials came up, I said, hold on, let's, let's watch these. And I would say probably five out of seven of them, because there's so many commercials now, five out of seven of them either showed only women. They showed women with no marriage ring and a baby, but no dad. Or the ones that showed a family a lot of times the dad was not the same race as the mom. You know what I'm saying? So white guys are out. Or the man was a bumbling idiot. That's the kind of stuff that I, if you boycott that, do you boycott those things? No, of course they don't. But the reason why I specifically talk, talk about divorce statistics is because that's where men get punished the most in the divorce courts, in the child custody. And I said, okay, let's look at some Christian right wing or likely right wing women. I said, uh, let's look at some divorce statistics, shall we? Oops, they sure do divorce a lot. And I bet they fight for majority custody of their kids, as statistics show. Because if, say, for example, 75% of all women getting divorced say they're Christian, and we know that 90% of the time they get custody and they fight, well, that's got to be a whole lot of Christians in there, doesn't it? Um, and duke it out for child support and alimony, just like the vast majority of women do. I find it funny to see conservative women get big mad when men speak out on issues and then say right-wing men have turned on them. I'm not right-wing, and neither of many of the men fed up with everything. But since you can't put us in a defined box, you don't know what to do about us now, do you? If right-wing women really cared, they'd help change laws, push, push for even 
uh, more even-handed child custody and not get divorced. But as usual, they do the same thing other women do and then claim they're different or traditional and conservative. I said, nice try, ladies, but the same blame, it's the same blame game as always, so try again. And I pulled a Pew Research study. Now, here's the study that I pulled up. And I do not know why this is not in dark mode because I was pretty sure I had dark mode on. And that must be in a different browser. My bad. I'm going to burn all of our retinas off of our faces. Uh, it says, oh, so this is a religious landscape study from Pew Research Center. It has about 5,000 participants. It's not a massive study, like 200,000 like you find, but it is a, a decent segment. Now, what I love here is people go, well, that's not a big enough segment. To it's big enough to kind of get an idea. Religious composition of divorced or separated adults, Christian, 74%. Uh-oh. 74%, uh, 74 out of 100 people getting divorced say they're Christian. But maybe, you know what, maybe they're casual. Maybe they're just casual, you know, like kind of, they just say they are, but they don't go to church. Uh, beliefs and practices, believe in, uh, believe in God among divorced or separated adults. Believe in God, absolutely certain, 69%. Believe in God, fairly certain, 18%. Those are the two biggest segments. Either uh, not at all, not too much, not too cer certain. Uh, they believe in God or don't know. Um, they do not believe it or other. Get the two the two biggest segments in belief of God among separated or divorced adults is I definitely believe, but you know again maybe this is just that's how they were raised maybe they don't practice importance of religion in one's life amongst uh, divorced or separated uh, adults very important fifty seven percent uh oh so religion's very important somewhat important twenty four percent there we are right back to over seventy five percent almost eighty five percent say. Religion's very important. But, but again, maybe it's just they don't actually go to church. Attendance at regular services amongst divorced or separated uh, adults. I don't know why I keep tongue twisting over that. Divorced or separated adults. 32% uh, go at least once a week. That's your weekly churchgoer. 35% once or twice a month or a few times a year. And 33% seldom never. So still a third of them or two thirds of them go somewhat regularly. Frequency of prayer, at least daily, 61%. Weekly, 15%. Those are, the, those are almost the, the two biggest, at least daily. Meditation, at least once a week or seldom never, seem to be the two blocks. Belief in absolute standards for right and wrong among divorced or separated adults. There are clear standards for what's right and wrong, 31%. The other is right or wrong, depends on the situation. So apparently they really believe Things are definitely right and wrong until it comes to divorce and struggling for child support and maybe taking custody away from the father so they can get more child custody. That apparently doesn't fall into the standards are definitely clear on what's right or wrong. Or it depends on the situation, which ironically supports the women when they go for child custody and alimony and uh, support or not getting divorced at all. Because at fre frequency of reading scripture at least once a week that's 40% tied with seldom or never. Interpreting scripture, the word of God should be taken literally. The word of God, not everything taken literally. Those are two of the biggest ones, 36 and 25%. I'm, I'm, I mean, isn't, isn't the Bible pretty big on staying together, I thought? Now, I, I don't know any particular passages. I'm sure some of you do. Belief in heaven, 73% believe in it. Belief in hell, 60% believe in it. And that, like I said, this is a 5,000. So you look through all these numbers, and I don't know about you, but it seems that a lot of Christians that definitely believe in God, that definitely, um, that definitely find religion very important, that definitely attend church at least once a week or once a month, definitely pray a lot, um, and definitely do church activities, and they meditate, and they, they feel perfectly fine about all of it. So this isn't like it's, well, it's only in name. They don't really believe it. No, these are people that are, they say they, they are. They go to church. They talk about it. They pray about it. And, and boom, they're still getting divorced. And, and because we know statistics, and when they say 
50% or 40% of people, or even if you go 30% of people are getting divorced today, that's a one in three chance, guys, that you're going to lose your, your marriage situation because 80% of women file. And so if you you definitely know that this percentage of, of this group that they talk to, 75% is Christian, if there's a 30% chance you're getting divorced, what is that 25% chance that Christians are? It's not this big number like, oh, if you just meet a good woman in church, you're safe. No, 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 no. And then interestingly, I made a post about this and somebody said, oh yeah, but look, if you look at this study, it's much different. And, and, and what it, when it says here that regular church attenders marry more and divorce less than they're uh, less devout. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, percentage identifying as Christian and attending church regularly. Uh, 70 to 90% devout, which means like big time, a third. And, and current numbers are obviously less as you go through time. So a third of people say, I am really devout. And that's 2010. And 70% Sam Christian. So about the same percentage as we talked about before. Likelihood of marriage anywhere between, uh, let's see, between, and this, this breaks it out between the black community and white community. 80% likelihood of marriage in the, in the white community, 58% of marriage in the black community. Let's go down here to divorce. Uh, amongst the devout, 30, 30, 31% of, of the white community, 42% of the black community. That's the devout and just non-devout, 45 and 40, respectively. And they sent, the, the person that posted this sent this like this was the burn that was going to get me and prove me wrong. It literally proves my point. That in the overall number of divorces, a huge percentage of them are Christian, are religious. 33%, 31% are devout and if, if you're, you know, one of my brothers or sisters in the black community, it's closer to 42 or 43%. This isn't the burn or the win you think it is. So when these women say, well, I, I push back against this, by statistically speaking, you're the vast majority of women that are getting divorced. 75% of the women getting divorced are religious. And you're the ones that are getting the custody. You're the ones that the laws are helping. You're, now, how many women go into court and say, Your Honor, I'm making good money. I know you want to give me an extra 1000 or $1,500 a month, but I, I'll be honest with you, I don't need it. He's a good man. Let him keep his money. Pretty sure that's not happening too much. Your Honor, uh, we, we really should do 50-50. Uh, you know, he's a good dad. We need to keep him in the life. I, even though you've said I can have the majority of custody and get a lot more child support, no, I, I think 50-50 is fair. How many times does that happen? Not often if we hear 90% of the time uh, women get custody more so than the father. Now, it doesn't mean 90% of the time they get it, but 90% of the time they want it, they get it. What about alimony? Well, we know how that is. So for, for you know, the Matt Walsh's and the, for the Matt Walsh's and the, the Ben Shapiro's and these conservative women out there saying, well, it's not me. Just go, just go find yourself the right person, go to church, find the right community. I have nothing against the religious community. I think we need more of it. I think that would fix a lot of the woes of, of the world today. But not when it comes to divorce and marriage. It really doesn't matter. The statistics are slightly better, slightly, between devout and non-devout, and between non-devout and nothing at all. Again, slight difference. So when these women come at you, or in this case, on my thread here, coming at me, saying that I'm the right wingers are attacking that you guys are the, just as much of the problem as everybody else. So get off your high horse. Stop acting like somehow you're holier than thou and that you're a, a bastion of morality. And maybe you as an individual is. But you as an individual, an individual is not what's destroying men and making them avoid marriage and making them avoid having families. It's everything as a whole. And you, you ladies, again, not these two particular ladies, but the conservative ladies that are, oh, I fight the patriarch for the patriarchy and I'm against feminism and you're no different than the rest. So climb off the high horse. And if you really want to help men, get to work. Get to work. 
Now, how do you do that? They, these two women that I'm calling out here, the Abby Libby, I'm not calling them out. I don't mean that, but that I'm using in this example, the Abby Libby and the other uh, uh, gal here that I was talking about. I'm not talking about those two ladies. Uh, they seem to be perfectly nice. And one says she's like, I think she said she's homeschooling her kids. They, they're they still married. They're happy. Those are the families we need. So I'm, I'm not picking on those two gals. But I'm saying in general that when, again, statistics don't lie. And maybe these two women and maybe a lot of the women are doing the right thing. But when you look at all women combined, Men say, I don't like these odds, and so I am refusing to participate in marriage and in, in maybe having kids with the wrong woman. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not on board with this. Until the laws, either until the divorce rates go way down or, or until the laws change to where men are not mercilessly just crushed by the divorce laws, Men are, you can talk to men all you want about emotion, but logically men look at the numbers and they say, this is not a good deal for me. And then in the other videos I've done this week, if you look at some of the women that are out there for dating, men say, look, you put these stats in front of me. And then on top of that, you're giving me those women for a choice. I'm good. I'm good. And that's where we are. Now, if these women want to push back, continue doing the same thing. Continue doing the right things that you are with your own family. Continue to to post and speak out against some of this other stuff online. That's a great start. But I think a lot more people need to see something and say, I'm not buying your product anymore. You guys know Gillette razors insulted men really bad. Braun razors just got into it. I think a lot of guys out there said, you know what? I'm not going to buy Gillette or Braun anymore. As a matter of fact, if you're like me, I looked up what Unilever sells. I don't buy anything that Unilever makes anymore. And there's a lot of products I really like. There are now foods that I don't eat. There are restaurants I don't go to. There are shopping centers I don't go to, or I try my very best to avoid. I don't put my money there. I don't go to Hollywood anymore and spend money except the last movie I went to go see, which was The Sound of Freedom. I went to that. I paid the money to go in and see that. Because I do feel that is a good cause. You know, there, you have to do more than just, eh, this is unfair, right? You, ha- you have to vote with your money. You have to vote with your uh, time and what you spend doing. You have to vote with the businesses that you uh, go to and the products that you buy. You have to vote by voting. But what's funny is because because we're not, you know, as, as the quote unquote red pill, which I, I really am getting away from that word. I do not like it because I don't really identify as that anymore. Like I said, it's kind of been hijacked. But the, the more people, the more people that kind of hate that group, the more on the outside we are. And the more on the outside we are, the more we're validated and the more we're right. We've said women treat us unfairly and women call us names and women, women maybe say that we do awful things and, and women say that we're the problem with everything in the world. And, and up to that point, we're mostly talking about the left, the feminism. And now the conservative women, ironically, are saying that we're just like the feminists and we're saying, no, you're like the feminists. And what's happening? More societal breakdown, more fighting. So now it's men versus women, black versus white, blah, rainbow versus not rainbow. Like it's all over the place. And I think most men in this community, what they just decide to do is they say, you know what? You do this amongst you, like argue amongst yourselves. I got better things. I just want you to leave me alone. Just leave me alone. And if you're going to crash and burn, you do it on yourself. I, like I'm not going to participate. You want to destroy yourselves and fight amongst yourselves and blame me? Go ahead. I'll, I'll do my thing. I'll enjoy my time by myself. I'll vote as best I can. I'll prepare for hard times by myself. And here's the funny thing. There's so many people that are like, oh, well, you're a loser. No, no, we're winners. Because we don't feel like we have to participate in something that's almost a guaranteed loss at this point in time. Like the, if you, because if a a coach, Greg Adams put put up, pulled up a study and it was a long-term study and it said, what was the divorce rate based on 40 year marriages, like following marriages for 40 years the divorce rate was 67%. So this, this pipe dream of, oh, you know, for the rest of your lives, no, there's a 66% chance 
that if you get married in your 20s, you're not going to be with that same woman in your 60s. And ironically, if you say, okay, well, that didn't work, but I'll find somebody else, this, the, the second and third marriage divorce rates are even higher than the first. So, you know, they're going to try to do the plain blame game. And, and what's funny is now these women think that it, it's like conservative men. We're not conservative. We're not liberal. I mean, some of you may be. That's not my point. But you can't put us in a box. This is men. Men on the left, men on the right, men in the center. You know, men, just men. Men are saying, you know what? I've had enough. You can't categorize me as this type of man or that. I am a man. Here, here's the category you can put me in. Fed up. That's the category we men are in. We're in the fed up category. And we're not going to play nice anymore. We're not going to play mean. We're not going to play nice. While everybody's on the, on the field and you got 17 teams all fighting, duking it out, we just calmly walk up, we take our ball, and we go home. You guys can keep on doing your thing. We're just off. And, that now, and it doesn't mean that we're not going to argue online. It doesn't mean we keep putting out, we don't put out statistics or videos or push our, our cause. But in the meantime, when I want it to all go away, I just push a power button on my computer and I do my thing. That's, and, and that's how we chose to fight back. And, and now they're coming, they're coming from us from all sides. And I'm fine with that because that also means more people are becoming aware of this group of men that are really disenfranchised, really ticked off, really tired of the crooked laws that, and society's portrayal of us. And maybe at least they'll see us. Now they may think we're the enemy, but at least they know we exist. And then over time, if we can have the conversations and we can have the you know, the, the cross talk, and maybe they'll see that we're, we're, we're not necessarily on their side, but we're also not against them. That I think these women are doing the right thing and they're, they're doing the right thing for their families. We just need to expand upon that. But statistically speaking, there's not enough expansion and it may be a long, long time till we get there. And until then, we're not gonna participate in your games. We're not gonna get married. We're not gonna become a divorce statistic. We're not going to, you know, frivolously go out and fight your battles for a country that hates us. We're just going to mind our business, do our own thing, and hope maybe someday you can finally see and understand where we're coming from. Uh, guys, if you like this content, again, join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. I'm going to be uploading these to X, Twitter. Um, so actually, they go over to Locals first, and Twitter is now second. Because on Twitter, I can upload the same thing on Twitter that I upload over to Locals. I don't have to edit. I don't have to watch my language. You don't have to watch my topics. So more and more stuff is going to be going on Twitter. Now, you're welcome. I don't get any monetization, and Twitter does not give me a dime for the uploading there. Um, I would prefer if you went over to Rumble instead of being on YouTube. Um, but if you want to have a conversation about my videos, maybe instead of just posting below YouTube, maybe check me over at Bachelor Joker on Twitter as well. We can have a lot more interesting, in-depth conversations over there because you don't have mama YouTube yanking your comments out because an algorithm doesn't like it. We'll leave it there. I'll see you in the next one.